All right, we are going to finish up a corset traditional draft that we started yesterday on stream. We are one and one with a pretty weak red green deck that we'll take a look at in just a second before we dive into play. But I wanted to thank my sponsor, Card Kingdom, before we do. Cardkingdom.com is where you can go, or as you know, my affiliate link down below gets you there from me specifically, which is helpful to my stream. And if you go there, you'll find one of the best sources for magic stuff on the internet, bar none. They have an amazing stock of both supplies and cards and sealed product. And their buy list is insane. And if you want to turn stuff that's in your closet into new magic stuff that you actually want, Card Kingdom is going to be your best bet for that. Go get that 30% Trade in bonus and upgrade your magic supplies and your stock. All right, let's go check out this deck. Thanks, Card Kingdom. Did I personally get a bit of spoiler fatigue in recent months? No, because I don't, I, I'm not all over that stuff. Frankly, it's, I, it's probably because I haven't seen all the spoilers that. Maybe you have. I um, I should maybe look more closely at stuff coming up because it does give you an early advantage in terms of optimizing, but I, I, ha I have a hard time putting that into my brain space before it's something I need to make a pack one, pick one choice on or whatever. Uh, let me go to deck building though, pop up here, and uh, we'll take a look. So yeah, this is uh, kind of just a curve out red green deck. Getting up to a Howling Giant. Yeah, it's just, I just look at this deck and I'm sad. This is not a great deck, but, you know, at the end of the day, you go two, three, four, five with some creatures and back it up with some removal and tricks and you can beat just about anything. So that's kind of our approach here. But we, I have very low expectations here. I put it at a par one and a half, I think. So we're going to, uh, we're going to see if we can't clear par here with another match win before <laughs> before we we stumble i would not bet on this one to go five wins though hey it, ha it, it stranger things have happened but this is not an amazing uh m20 deck by any stretch robert it's tough to say robert's uh, struggling with this format and is trying to figure out why uh, and whether it's variance or mistakes is something you have to kind of look at yourself. Uh, you could, you know, if you've been playing on Arena and you, I don't know if, if stuff like MTGA Tracker works after the fact, but, you know, there are ways to, like, look at your actual games that you've played. If you haven't recorded your games on video or anything, I, you know, you can still... But it's just tough to know whether you are missing something, uh, making some more game mistakes than usual, or whether it's just variance. It's incredible what variance can do, though. I mean, you don't even have that many plays of a format. Like, Robert, how many? consider how many times you've actually played. Like, how many times have you drafted the set? Even if it's like 50 times. Even if you drafted this set 50 times, think of the amount of variance in terms of your overall win loss that could take place. If you were a 55% win rate player, so you're looking to win, you know, 27 to 30 times out of out of 50 or something, a little bit of variance can really throw that in one direction or the other, and you can feel like an all-star in a format, or you can feel like you're trash at a format, and really it is just sample size. Uh, I am not a professional statistician, though. I don't know where that line is mathematically where you can start to say okay i think i have enough evidence here that i'm actually just stinky at this format but i think you'll find that you probably don't even have enough plays as a heavy player to get out of the variant zone and into i can look at my results and understand how good i am at this format robert says about 300 yeah so nobody drafts 300 times except maybe my buddy adam so uh <laughs> I would say uh, focus on decisions. You know, if you're feeling like you're bad at this format because of your results, uh, return that focus back to your decisions and take it decision by decision, pick by pick, play by play, and uh, try and not get too hung up on individual results. The variance is, is heavy. All right, let's jam.
I hope human drafting is in the future too, Tekken. Uh, but that's also interesting. I kind of want to see what 17lands.com is up to on that front. If there are digital tools to help us draft to more gem success, you know I'm going to do it. Without cheating. I, I'm not going to like cheat the system or anything, but uh, if it if it's known information that can be gathered, I want it. All right, we're going to keep this. These Ember Cats don't ramp us to a giant per se, but they are two drops. Uh, if we find some of our elementals, we'll get them online right quick. All right, kitty, get to work. If we draw an elemental, great. If not, we at least have Shock plus Ember Cat on three. I suppose we can use Ember Cat to cast Ember Cat, but that doesn't get us anything here. So we'll get in for two and then uh, deploy the Pride. Well, we can finish that off with a shock. They have to block here if we attack with these two kitties. It seems pretty clear that that's what someone would be, is just trying to get two damage through here. Um, I don't know if we want to finish off the Sentinel. Looks like it's uh, some sort of probably blue-white skies with a red splash would be my guess. But I think I like taking out the Sentinel. Sentinel. Uh, if they don't have something with three toughness and two power to put on the board next turn, this is a pretty devastating follow-up attack, so I'm going to use the shock there. I don't I don't think the sentinel is a hugely valuable creature, but I'm trying to take advantage of my early board presence. Yeah, Robert, we could have done it later. Um, but there you go. That's not a bad result. They had to use a four drop removal on our two. Unfortunately, we just don't have any um, any pressure plays here. But at least, basically all of our draws are good now. They get us to the Howling Giant or their action. But Appa could drop something here that stonewalls the kitties and then we're looking to go a little longer. Like, I, we don't have quite have like closeout power here. Yeah, although we get to attack into Dawning Angel, so they get four life and uh, push it back the other direction, but we still get kitty cat attacks and still get uh, howling, approaching the Howling Giant. I am not going to reduce this to ashes, though, because the Ember Cats trade. Let's just offer that up. And so, like, we've traded a 2-drop for a 4-drop and a 2-drop for a 5-drop. So, unfortunately, we're just not spending our mana. So all of this advantage we're getting in terms of trading our low drops for their high drops is flushed as we're not actually using our mana. But it's at least worth pointing out that that's a good thing, that you want to be... you, you That's ideal, to be trading your, sm your small drops for their large drops. That's the thing we'll uh, reduce to some ash, but if we draw a land, we'll start with the Howling Giant. It may give them an opportunity to uh, make a spirit or whatever, but I'm going to risk that if we get a land. Uh, no land. I mean, we... Uh, yeah. I'm going to burn it because I don't want them to make 1-1s one here, and uh, we can't cast the Giant yet. So I'll just burn it, and we'll get in for two. It's a, you know, our removal is precious, so I've, I've made this decision to use our shock and our reduce somewhat early in the game on a relative scale, but I think we have the closeout power here to make that worth it, and, and the, uh, the risk of 1-1s is real. Like, they had an anticipate, so, like, this was a 1-1 one -one flyer in and of itself, so maybe good that we got rid of that. And here we can go gift onto a land, get the aeronaut down, and then have a guaranteed giant next turn.
Right on, Robert. You can do side events all weekend. Uh, if the main event isn't limited, that's kind of what I've decided is my bag at GPs. These, you know, just don't do the GP. Just go for the side stuff. Oh, yeah. And was it you who were asking about uh, Two-Headed Giant and two, you know, kind of two-player play advice? And I kind of didn't speak to actual play advice. We can talk to that if you give me a reminder at some point. Well, they use their removal on our flyer. That makes sense. Hopefully this just overwhelms them. Playing magic with the kid is the main event. Uh, while we're waiting here in uh, sideboard, I can say one thing that comes to mind, Robert, when it comes to two-player magic with a worse player, with a less experienced player. Your job as the experienced player is to keep them engaged, especially in something like Two-Headed Giant, where because you can show cards and communicate strategy, your kid could just fall asleep at the table and you could play both sides of the game if you wanted to, right? So the the uh, the trick is not letting a game drag out uh, unnecessarily due to your less experienced player tanking, but making sure, oh, okay, she, oh, that's right, you taught, sorry, I was thinking uh, the other way. It's a little more common, obviously, for Magic players to uh, be teaching their kids to play than the other way around, but I love that it's flipped. Well, in which case it's on, sounds like, I mean, if you're around here, you're both going to be competent enough to hold your own. But that's one of the major things I... Uh, whenever two two players of disparate skill play in a paired event, that's a, a big point, is to, to make sure that the more experienced player doesn't dominate decision-making. Uh, bring in... Oh, uh, yeah, sleep, sleep paralysis. I don't know if it calls for a natural end yet, but we have such weak cards in here. I don't mind. We can cut a pup. No big deal. Uh, like we have a lot of creatures, don't we? Yeah, still at eighteen five. Um, and yeah, airstrike. Sorry, I should. I like chatting, but now I'm missing out on my. Oh, I also didn't. Uh, the reclaimer is whatever here. I'll do that. Uh, Resonator asks, what do you do when the less experienced player really wants to make a suboptimal deck building choice? Uh, you have to decide what you're there for. If the prizes really matter to you and the spikiness really matters to you, I mean, I, I would get on the same page going in. Uh, you know, frankly, I like... I'd be a little insulted if I, if I was playing with someone who's a lot less experienced to me and they weren't you know, heeding some of my deck building advice, but at the same time, if it really mattered to them, I would try and let it go and be like, whatever, we're playing side events at the GP. If they want to, let's have an object lesson in why this card is bad. Let them draw it and cast it, you know? Yeah. Um, somebody give Hoogba the link to my article, and I'm deciding whether we're keeping this or not. This is really flood, pot flood potential. I think I'm going to mulligan this, <sighs> except we get, we do have a straight 4-5 right here. Like, these are just coming down, no problem. But blue-white can be a very aggressive pairing, and they're on the play. So I want to find something to do earlier against blue-white, or we're just going to die to the sky. So I'm going to mulligan this. Well, isn't that cute? Thank you, Shuffler. Mm, this, I mean, if we get, like, if there's a mountain on top, this would be a fine hand, right? But we just have to mulligan. All right, let's try and make this work. We're going to ditch our uh, targeted sideboard, our narrow card. Yeah, we can talk about, how, like, how to decide what to do in a London mulligan. I think... Uh, you've, you've got to get rid of your narrow stuff. So even if they're, they, turns out they have a target, we can't risk it. 
natural end is an easy boot, but then you're about, you know, do you risk going down on a land? I can't see going to uh, two lands when all of our spells are four. So we gotta uh, get rid of a four drop creature. These two have synergy being both elementals. So we're gonna, of course, ditch the aeronaut. And this allows us, if we find a kitty, we got two ember kitties. If we, if we find a kitty, we can even ramp out to these two and, and try and recover from our uh, disadvantaged position. But I didn't realize it, but Oppo mold to five as well. So we're both gonna be working from a card disadvantaged position here. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate the sub. Now we're flooding a little bit, but if these two survive without being pinned down by enchantment removal, maybe, uh, what is the splash here? Maybe, I don't understand what Oppo's deck is color-wise, I guess. Mostly we've seen white, but then the lands don't look like they're white lands. I don't know. Uh, let's go Lavakin Brawler, then we drop uh, Thicket Crasher after. You want to set up an attack with the Brawler that's supported by the Crasher rather than the other way around. But... Dawning Angel. Wish this were an instant. Yeah, Ryan wishes his the card in his hand were better. That's fascinating commentary but if it were an instant we could set up a uh, a double block blowout that's the really the power of instant versus sorcery we don't get that option but we do get to airstrike uh something if we if we airstrike the sentinel actually and drop the thicket crasher they don't have they can only double block and we get both so even though like my eyes go to the Dawning Angel, this is ostensibly the better creature. We do have a Howling Giant for the reach. And I like putting him in a bad spot here with uh, a strike on the three toughness so that they only have uh, four total toughness and um, not enough power in an individual creature. So if they want to block this Brawler, it's going to take both of their creatures. I think that was correct. Maybe that was a little short term in my thinking to take out the 1-3 instead of the 3-2, but it did allow for a good attack there. And it looks like Oppo is going for a race now. And we're going to take that and see what, how, what we can do. If we get to a giant, we, we, we blank everything they've got and we're uh, one land away. If we have to, we can put Crasher in front of the sentry eventually. Ooh. All right, we really need to get to giant now. Uh, Kitty is an elemental, so we get the Brawler bigger, which is decent. And that all also means they can't, uh, they don't have a, a good double block here. If we send the Crasher, they're almost certainly putting the Sentry in front of it. But maybe not. Maybe they would just accept a race there. I'm going to go with, well, now we have the Ember Cat to block the Sentry on the way back if they choose not to block the Crasher. And if we are in a racing situation, I mean, I hope we just draw an untapped land and we can play the giant and feel good about that. But uh, I think I want to go like, yeah, I'm going to tag with both. We're somewhat just taking a risk here, but if we get the 5-5 five, five reach down, it doesn't matter that they got a counter there. 
It doesn't matter that they made a 1-1, one, one, but we just need to drop this giant. All right. Hold the line. I mean, if they have any kind of... Like, they can get us to... Uh, actually, if they... We might be dead if they just go all in, all in. Because they can go attack everything, attack everything. And if we don't improve the situation, we're... Uh, we are dead. But yeah, might as well attack with the kitty. There's no way they're blocking. But they could go... Oh, man, if they, they did, that'd be great. If I were Oppo, given that we're empty-handed, I would move all in. Attack with everything, and then make me have uh, something else for one of the other two flyers next turn. We'll see if they do, though. Not... This is where a lot of a lot of players have trouble taking a high risk line, even though it might be correct because there's a risk of ruin, right? We're not dead on board, are we? What am I miss? Is there a trample or something? I kind of don't want to look, but yeah. So not not everybody sees the line, and some people are just scared of that line because it involves giving up your wind's fury. It just means saying I'm gonna just sack my wind's fury, but they're doing it. So I think they're. Uh, I think Oppo's doing the correct thing, and they're making us draw something. That's correct. I think we're probably going to game three because Oppo figured it out. If they drop a flyer here, it's just all over. Yeah. All right. So it looks like they're really just trying to be three-ish colors to support the that rare, but red is, is the splash there, it looks like. Let's see, do we have anything else to help with that flying situation? Not unless we bring in a dragon mage. That does not seem correct. Can't bring in maniacal rage. They'll just enchant it. We'll keep in the natural end. I think I like those changes. Keep in the airstrike in the natural end, but we don't really have anything else. So let's run it back otherwise. Uh, yeah, plush Nightingale is as rough as it is to see an amazing card, pack three or whatever that is not in your colors. You can't even really splash a uh, double colored card. The only time. You should only think of splash cards as single mana. You know, you can splash or reduce to ashes because it only requires one red, right? That's splashable. Fire Elemental, not splashable, requires two red. The exception to this is if you're in a spot where you have multiple cards that are capable of fixing for two colors at once. So Gift of Paradise allows you to tap for, say, red, red. So if you had two Gifts of Paradise then you're at least, you have two ways that you could do this, but it's still high risk, and I, I wouldn't really recommend it. Two Gift of Paradise would be enough, like, okay, so you have two gifts, and if you, if, um, if the Cavalier were blue-blue, and you had two gifts, I'd say do it, but it's still pretty high risk to do it with three, because a single gift still does not cast your Cavaliers. But yeah, I, I I would pick it just because I take Mythics when they make themselves available to my uh, free-to-play account, but your mileage may vary on why to pick something you wouldn't play. All right, come on, let's curve out and get to some gems. It'd be really nice if we got 800 gems back from this very mediocre draft. <sighs> well, we don't have red yet, but we're keeping this. We've got a... Uh... Two drop and some decent fours in the color we do have. How many dual lands with two gifts would make that more reasonable? Boy, it's still pushing it. Because you need you're you're talking about needing no matter no matter what in that spot, you need uh one of the two gifts and then one of your other sources like so it's like you need a one in two and then you need a you know anyway it's 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 tough it's tough the math doesn't yeah pick it to have in your collection and maybe if you end up with a third gifts and uh and a, a green blue dual land or whatever 
then uh, it starts to look more doable, but it's a, it's a real stretch. Hey, Fiddles, welcome. Buckeye says two to three. I would want at least three. I would want th three sources of blue outside of the two gifts before I was happy about, quote, splashing a cavalier. No, boy, we could use a mountain. Uh, we'll offer this trade, they won't take it. Not like this, Shuffler. Give us a mountain off the top, please. Well, they don't have the mana to give it first strike and uh, I'm happy to get some value out of the Sentinel before it does have first strike, so let's just do this. Mountain, 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 mountain. Here comes the mountain. All right, literally any land. Fine, give me another forest. I'll take it. Forest, 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 forest. Oh, that's a nice one. That's nice, Oppo. Well, we got something to cast, but I'm starting to lose hope pretty quickly here. Uh, Oppo, not only are we color and mana screwed, but Oppo just pulled off a fantastic value play there with uh, uh, wave crashing the seer back to hand. Tough to beat this. Without some, I mean, I don't know what sequence we have here to do. I guess we need a, oh, obviously a land gives us a Thicket Crasher to trade with the Wave Crasher. Okay, then I don't know how we get this Air Elemental dead. That's a huge problem. We do have, okay, so the plan is a Thicket Crasher trade with Wave Crasher. Or we could go Brightwood Tracker, a double block, and just have it trade with one of these and try to keep Thicket Crasher Brawler together. Uh, yeah, that's true. We should attack, and we'll take the Shock Kill if we can get it, I suppose. It does use up our whole turn, but it will be worth it because we have so few ways to deal with the Air Elemental. Uh, so probably not blocking and uh, really quite a penalty, actually, even if it works. Because if this, if this works, we spend the whole turn on a Shock. Uh, but by doing that, we also commit to the Thicket Crasher play. Whereas uh, if we kept the Courser back, one of the things we could have considered was playing the Tracker and looking to double block Tracker and Courser on Wave Crasher. But now we're kind of priced into trying to make this trade. All right, going to six is big trouble. And it's effectively going to two, because I don't think we're going to be able to do anything to take out the Air Elemental uh, in a turn. And now we have to plan to block and trade here and then um, draw into Reduce to Ashes to not lose. Then we ha lose to this. Oh, we have this as a follow-up. We can shock that as well. So uh, we're only, we're, we're, we're probably dead, but we do have outs. We have a plan at least. Um, we can go Tracker here. I like Tracker here because it allows the double block on Wave Crasher, but also leave Shock up in case, because uh, then we can shock the Cloudkin when it comes back down. The main thing here though, is that we need very specifically our uh, Reduced to Ashes off the top, or I think we're just dead. I don't think we have anything else. I guess uh, maybe Gift of Paradise gives us enough life to survive one more turn. Uh, could have used Cat instead of Tracker, but there's nothing else we can do with the mana, right? So might as well, I think, use out use up all our mana. Then we may be able to slip Ember Cat into a future turn where Tracker wouldn't have fit.
All right. Well, we're likely to die, but it would be pretty neat if we top decked the reduce and managed to stabilize here. So let's go for it. Come on, one time reduce. Ah, ha, ha, look at that. Uh, unfortunately, we have to chump, but we're not dead. We're not dead. So no matter what, if they have any removal, we are dead. But if not, uh, we have to throw a chump and then... But Fire Elemental comes down and trades the turn after. So if these are nothing but lands, we, we got this. What? Not nothing but lands? Unbelievable. I am outraged that by top decking reduced to ashes, we still didn't manage to win this game. Yeah, too bad. I appreciate that the Magic Gods gave us a chance there, but uh, we can't do anything about the Elemental. We could play Smuggler and Ember Cat. Yeah, but we're just toast. I'm going to give them credit for figuring out to attack. Well, you don't get exciting top decks. You don't get to call your shots if you don't think through what, you, what your shot is. So that's fun, at least. Yeah, so I like that we, we got a chance. We, we took our shot there. We, got, we had our shot. Couldn't make it work. Crappy deck. So whatever. Let's take this, uh, let's take this prize. I said 1.5, so we were right there. We were right there uh, fighting for par and got a little bit boned in game three. Hit with the variance stick. Yeah, I can take a second here between drafts is a good time for it, Robert. Yeah, this hurts our bankroll. I mean, our bankroll is pretty healthy. You don't like to go a traditional with no gem result, but that's why I've tried to express, even though this may look like a lot of gems relative to what a lot of free-to-play accounts might have, from a bankroll management standpoint of someone who's trying to play regularly in traditional drafts and draft five times a week, it's actually uh, the risk of ruin it, uh, looms large with only 66.50. If we rattled off a couple more O2s and 1-2s in traditionals, we could be out of gems in a heartbeat.